Okay, and I think we are live. So hi everyone and welcome to my channel. For those new here, my name is Nikki. I'm an author and editor and I post videos here on YouTube about writing, editing, reading and all the other things I love. And it's the reading we're here for today because it is the last day of the month. And it's time to wrap up uh, just a bit of an overview of the books that I've been reading during January. So uh, without any further ado, I'll crack straight on because as usual, there are uh, a few to get through. So, um, Kicking off, uh, one that I actually finished kind of right at the end of December, but I don't think I quite made it onto my stream then, so I will talk about it now. Uh, it's a book my sister bought me for uh, birthday or Christmas, can't remember which one, uh, they're both in December, and it's called Cook Korean by Robin Ha. And this was a four star read for me. It's essentially a Korean cookbook, but it's done um, as a kind of uh, comic style. So there's a little bit of a story about her cooking journey and all the recipes are um, fully illustrated with little step by steps um, with little pictures and everything. So it's quite cute. I haven't actually tried any of the recipes yet, but there are some interesting looking ones there. So I'm sure I will eventually. Uh, moving on, the next thing I read was um, Beowulf, the translation by J.R. Um, Tolkien. And I've read Beowulf a number of times um, in, I've got a, an original text and I've also got a couple of different translations. Uh, this was a five star read for me. I think it is a really excellent translation as you'd expect from a scholar of Tolkien's level. But I also really enjoyed the commentary um, about the translation and some of Tolkien's notes and thoughts on the original text. Uh, that part's probably only going to interest you if you're uh, fascinated by um, etymology but uh, if you are it's worth reading and even if you're not you can still at least enjoy his translation of the tale. The next book I read was Dostoevsky's The Double. So this is a novella length work by Dostoevsky about a man who suddenly encounters this double of himself who seems to be doing a lot better than him and is uh, kind of taking over his uh, position yeah, at work, at home. Um, it follows Dostoevsky's um, familiar themes of victimization and isolation and um, paranoia. Uh, this was a four and a half star read for me. It's not my absolutely favorite Dostoevsky work. I wasn't quite as captivated by the hero or the sort of uh, protagonist as I have been, say, Raskolnikov in Crime and Punishment, but it's still a really enjoyable book that looks at some interesting themes. Next up was Thousand Cranes by Kawabata. Uh, this is my first time reading Kawabata and I really enjoyed his prose style. It's very lyrical and beautiful. The story revolves around a young man who um, ends up reconnecting with one of his father's old mistresses and becomes involved with her himself and to a lesser extent with her daughter. Um, this was a five star read for me. It's a really fascinating drama and it kind of looks at that changing period between the modern and the traditional, as so many writers did at this, this point in time. Um, definitely, I'm keen to read some more works by Carl Butter in the future. <clears throat> Next up, I read, um, again, this was one I finished right on the last day of December, so it didn't quite make it into the last uh, rundown. And it's Sorrowland by River Solomon. And this is one I received from NetGalley. And this was a four and a half star read for me. The basic premise that at the start of this book is a young woman who's pregnant and she's running away, uh, escaping from a cult. And she um, gives birth to twins and is raising them in a sort of semi-wild um, state in the woods initially. Um, however, as the story progresses, it, it kind of moves away from a simple sort of drama to a kind of fantasy gothic horror story. Um, I can't really say too much more about the plot than that because it would spoiler it, but there are some really interesting themes, um, some diverse characters, and although the pace starts quite slowly, it builds into a fairly action-packed ending. So um, if you like um, fantasy, LGBT characters, um, a bit of a gothic twist, then it's worth checking out. The next one I uh, read was also a NetGalley read and it was Transcendent Kingdom by Yag Yassi. Um, this one I'm not going to do a full long review on because my review is actually um, pending um, the publication uh, as requested by the publisher. 
so it will be out in a few weeks time I'll just tell you that I gave it four stars and the basic premise of this story is a young woman who um, in Ghana who is going to be married to a very eligible man however she enters the relationship knowing that the family want him to marry her because they're hoping it will separate him from another woman who he's been shacked up with for a little while and um, it's a drama that kind of follows her difficulty in trying to secure her husband I guess you like um, and get him away from this other woman and anything more than that you'll have to wait for my review to come out on my blog later in February. Uh, the next book I read again from NetGalley was Wonderstruck by Ali Terrin and this is um, the last book in her Magic in Manhattan trilogy set in the 1920s and it's uh, a four star read for me. It's a really enjoyable continuation of the story. I really liked how the romance between the two main male characters um, progresses um, and how it has progressed throughout all three books. Um, it's nicely handled, it moves at a believable, realistic pace. Um, it's not this just insta-love. And I thought it was a good conclusion to the main plot and this sort of issue with the magical artifacts that's been going on since the start as well. So um, if you've already been reading the series, then this is a great book and you can have a chance to finish the story. And if you haven't, it's worth checking out the full three uh, books in the storyline. Uh, next up was a book I borrowed from the library and it's Rebel Soul by Axie O. And this is a book set in uh, a future, uh, future Korea, future Seoul, in which um, the city is kind of split in two and part of it is highly technological and they have these robots, I mean think Pacific Rim kind of piloted robots if you like. Um, it was a four star read for me, I'm not huge into Mecca but that didn't kind of take over in this book, it was part of the story but it wasn't the principal focus which was more on these two people. There's a kind of fantasy sci-fi element to the tale as well when uh, the main male character meets a girl with special um, cognitive abilities and uh, I don't want to say too much more and spoiler it but it's a fairly action-packed drama, reasonably well paced and there's plenty going on to capture and hold your interest. Uh, the next book I read takes us back to NetGalley and it was a manga called The Cat Proposed by Hayoni Dento. Uh, it's a single um, standalone manga volume and this was a four star read for me as well. The premise of this is uh, uh, the main character goes to the theatre one day where he um, sees a performance by this man who suddenly in front of his eyes turns into a cat and it turns out he is one of these mystical creatures who is a sort of cat but can look human and uh, the cat decides that he wants to stay with this human because he's spotted who he really is, he's seen his true identity so they begin this relationship um, which has its ups and downs along the way uh, it was great fun, it was super cute um, I haven't come across a book about uh, these creatures before so I enjoyed that aspect of it as well uh, sticking with NetGalley, I also read Savage Tongues by uh, Azarine van der Vliet Alumi. <laughs> That's a name for you to remember. And this one was a three and a half star read for me. This story is about a young woman who is um, revisiting her past, quite literally, but also mentally. And she's looking back on a period when she was a young girl and um, lost her virginity and began this slightly abusive relationship with a much older man. And the thing that I found about this book that meant I only gave it three and a half stars was although I could understand the trauma that she was going through about this event, there were times in it when I just kind of wanted to give her a shake and say, look, get over it. <laughs> um, which sounds horrible, but it's just the way she came across that she kind of did nothing but whine and you just wanted to have a bit more agency and take control of her her life really and she does start to a little bit as the story progresses but it was just this woe is me attitude all the time that started to grate on me once we got to about the middle of the book um this one would be a, a warning attached that if you've been in an abusive relationship of this kind then there probably could be some triggering stuff going on because it's fairly um, 
descriptive passages about her relationship with this guy. So that's just something to watch out for. But um, it was an interesting book. It raised a lot of different points. And I think one of its problems too, that it, as well as that aspect, it was raising the idea of living as a Middle Eastern woman in the West and the difficulties that involves. And it was almost like it needed more story time to be able to de develop these themes to the level that they needed to be developed to really um, consider them in, in the way they deserve. I think that's probably the best way to say it. So it was interesting. I liked what she was trying to achieve, but it just didn't 100% work for me. Sticking with NetGalley, um, Fingertips for Pianists by Elizabeth Hembray. So this is a non-fiction book uh, looking at piano technique, um, hand health, um, various things just to help you get the most enjoyment out of piano. It covered things like tips for sight reading and for performance anxiety. And there was a little bit of everything, which I really enjoyed. It got three and a half stars from me. One of the things I had difficulty with was the formatting. Now, I will say this was an arc, so perhaps when the finished book comes out, these things will be fixed. But all of the images were completely blown out and some of them were completely illegible because they just weren't properly formatted for the ebook, and they were just like zoomed in and blurry and you couldn't tell what they were. Some of the figure drawings were just done as stick figures and I kind of would have thought a photo or a more realistic illustration would have been more beneficial. So there were some good tips, but I just thought the presentation could have used a bit more work. Next up, a book I borrowed from the library, Untold Night and Day by Bay Sua. This is another really interesting book. This is three and a half stars for me. Um, the premise of this story is there's a, uh, a young woman, she's in her late 20s, She's working at an audio theatre for the blind, but she has just been made redundant. The theatre is closing down. And the action takes place in the course of 24 hours, a night and a day, as the title suggests, as she's trying to think about the future. Um, meanwhile, though, we have all these parallel stories going on that are almost as if uh, we're in a different world where the same characters have made different choices and they're in different situations. And... There's this repetition of key events and of language that links all these worlds together. But it's a very surreal story. And I think it's too surreal in some ways, because when I closed it, I just wondered what on earth I'd just read. Um, I really liked the dreamy prose, the lyrical flow of the language. But at the end of the day, it just left me a little bit baffled, which is why it was three and a half stars. Let me just have a little sip of drink. So, uh, moving on to another book I borrowed from the library, uh, again by a Korean author. This is Diary of a Murderer and Other Stories by Kim Young Ha. And this was a five star read for me. The main story, the title story, Diary of a Murderer, it's about a man who, um, he is a serial killer, but he's reached a point in his life where he's got dementia, he's starting to forget things. And he's kept uh, very close diaries of all his serial killings and various things. And now he's trying to use his diary as a way to remember important things that he just knows he mustn't forget, people he needs to look after. Uh, it was a really interesting and thoughtful piece, um, something completely out of the ordinary. I've never come across a story like that before. The other tales um, perhaps weren't quite as original, but were still gripping in their own ways. And I'd definitely be keen to read more by this author in the future. So if you like short stories, contemporary with a little bit of magical realism here and there and a little bit of a bizarre twist, then check out this book. Going back to NetGalley, I read London and the 17th Century by Marguerite Lincoln. This was a four star read for me. This was a, a history nonfiction book and it got four stars for me rather than five because I felt some chapters were really great and others were a little bit dull. But to be fair, I would say the chapters I found a bit dull were ones that centered on the political events of which I've already read quite a lot in the past. So none of it was new to me, uh, which may be why I just didn't get a lot of excitement from it. I enjoyed the chapters more on things like changing fashions, um, different styles of interior decorating, um, food and various things. That day to day life information that I haven't read as much in other books is what I found really enjoyable in this one. So if you're 
interested in history or you're an author researching the period, this is a worthwhile book to pick up because it does have, as well as the general political um, and world event situation or country event situation, it does also focus in on some of that smaller everyday life detail as well. Uh, next up is another NetGalley read, Murder in the Age of Enlightenment uh, by the uh, famous Japanese author Akutagawa. This is my, apart from one short story of his I've read in the past, this is really my first time reading Akutagawa and I really enjoyed this book, I gave it five stars. It's a really wonderful collection of short stories and these stories are absolutely beautifully crafted, um, well paced, um, beautifully contained tales with just that right amount of description of characters and plot to hold your interest and tell a complete story within a short uh, word count. Um, as with any collection like this, I enjoyed some of the stories more than others, but there really would be something here for everyone. There's quite an interesting mix of tales. Next up, I read How to Live Japanese by Yazawa Yutaka. Now this book, I actually had a book from NetGalley uh, last year, which was called The Little, Ju Little Book of Japanese Living from Memory. And I've discovered that I had that on my wish list because I enjoyed it so much I wanted to buy a copy. And then I discovered that was actually just a condensed pocket version of this book. So when it came to buying one, I decided to get the, the bigger full text. So it's a five star read for me. As I said, I already loved the smaller one. And this one also had plenty, um, to plenty going for it. Obviously, some of the same information, but a lot of extras too. It's a book that covers both Japanese history, culture, uh, and traditions, uh, a little bit of sort of tourist-like information, but it's not really a travel guide, it's more an overview of the country and its culture. So um, some fun things about some of the language and just a really enjoyable, nicely illustrated, great coffee table kind of book. Uh, we're coming to the end, we've got three to go. So next up is another NetGalley read, A Visitor's Guide to Jane Austen's England by Sue Wilkes, and this is another five-star read for me. Um, there's plenty of books out there like this, but what I enjoyed about this one is it told the story in a kind of style of narration. And I mean, it's not a story, it's a history book, but it felt like a story is perhaps a better way to say it because of the narration style. It was almost like the way Jane Austen as an author sometimes talks to the reader in her books um, or through one of the characters in her books. Um, great, great collection of information. A lot of it is stuff you'd find in other similar books, but there were some really nice details here on certain issues that have been skimmed over in some of the other texts on this period I've read. So again, as with that London in the 17th century book I mentioned earlier, this is a great one if you're interested in history or if you're an author looking to write historical fiction and you want to know more about Regency era England, this is a really good book. It's got uh, plenty of great information that will help you and just inspire you if you're a keen history buff. Uh, next up, I read The Lonely Planet's Guide to Soul. Um, it's a five star read. Look, it's it's a travel guide. Um, Lonely Planet guides are always good. They always have a nice balance of information. Um, I've definitely written down a few things from this one that I want to see when we can travel again and I can go to Seoul. Um, Tokyo and Seoul are high on my list of the moment we can go abroad again. Um, and it's feasible to do so. So for now, I can just enjoy reading these guides and uh, doing a bit of forward planning. And finally, the last book I read for January was another book I borrowed from the library, and it's People from My Neighbourhood by Kawakami Hiromi. Um, I will have uh, mentioned Kawakami Hiromi a few times in the last few months of these feeds, because I've read a few of her books from the library in that period. And I've enjoyed them all and this one is another five star read for me. It's a collection of not even really short stories, I'd call them microfiction, because it's a small um, book in terms of its size and each of these stories is really only on average about three pages in this small format book. So they are very short and yet they're really wonderfully contained pieces that do give you a sense of a complete story within that tiny word count and because some of the characters mingle between the stories. You also kind of build this overarching sense of the neighborhood and the people that live there as well through all these separate little stories. So again, if you're a short story fan, you like contemporary Japanese fiction, it's worth checking out. If you're already a fan of Karakami Hiromi, then you'll like this book. If you're new to her work, I'd probably recommend starting with one of the novellas before moving on to this, but um, 
it is something you could just pick up and enjoy at any time. So that brings me to the end of my book wrap up for January. I have um, about, I've got one book I'm just starting tonight and then I've got about another 33 waiting um, between books I got for Christmas, books I got from NetGalley recently. Um, so there's plenty to read and I hopefully will get through a few more of them by the end of February, which I can then tell you about. So I will end there for now. I hope you'll join me again at the end of next month for my TV and film and book wrap ups again then. I will have a couple of vlogs posting uh, with some author and booktube type tags in the meantime. So do check out my channel, subscribe if you like the content, and I will see you all again soon. Bye for now, everyone.